The Serib Centers, U.S.-Philippines Joint Venture, Building Portable Renewable Energy Homes, Schools, Offices, Emergency Medical Units, and Portable Farms. Building these facilities into entire communities where the families can work and learn and play all within the same community. These SERP centers, again, will be built with renewable energy capabilities, no need to be hooked up to any outside local power source. Our first joint venture will be to build communities for those who live within the squatter areas here in the Philippines. We need the Ministry of Housing and other government officials to select land where these new communities will be built. This will be a displayed project for future communities built throughout the Philippines as well as throughout the entire global community, namely throughout the Middle East where the predominant number of Filipino workers are now working outside the country trying to provide a life for their families here in the Philippines. Yet we believe these new communities built throughout the Middle East will help the families join those who work outside the country within those same geographical areas where their loved ones are now. So they won't be estranged from their families. Again, homes, schools, offices, emergency medical units, portable farms, these communities will be established, Filipino communities, where they will be able to join their family members working outside the country. Now, the United States needs this joint venture because currently the SWIFT Act project will begin, that is Act A-C-T, Arizona, California, and Texas. Communities on both sides of the border will be built and we will utilize the Philippine population as the robust, growing workforce they have within the nation. And we will pay healthy living wages for the Philippine population here within the nation as well as throughout the global community. We need your joint venture action to begin this project for the Squana areas starting in Nabultus. We're looking forward to working closely with you. We'd appreciate very much if you would listen to the entire SARP Center's presentation to understand what the project will begin and how it will build the workforce for the Philippine nation as well as U.S. and on both sides of the border throughout the Latin American coastline. We're looking forward to working with you soon. Sarabcenters.com GEP Global Emergency Provisions Renewable Energy Communities Sarab Standing for Strategic Advantage Redevelopment Aspirational Project Changing the present HR homeless refugee global sorrows into the future HR human resources global solution by Chuck Thompson director of world emergency building a new renewable energy facilities community with our future global human resource taking care of the world's homeless and refugees giving and providing them a place to live, learn, grow, work in a place of peace will bless our global community. Global renewable dividends will pour in, not only with newly educated human resources, but a new international renewable energy facilities industry internationally, providing new jobs for the multiple millions with a new national revenues in the billions and a new revenue energy global economy in the trillions. Serap 
In Tagalog means delicious in English. From a, a delicious idea, we are building delicious renewable energy communities, renewing lives throughout the global community deliciously. Now, the homeless and refugee growing global sorrows is seriously out of control and tragically getting worse daily. Not just those within war-torn areas who are either forced out or displaced from their homes. Presently at this current time, placing these sad words to the page, I'm within the Philippines. Today's date and time is 5. 25, 2017, at 9.02 a.m. And today, something must be done for those living within the squatter areas throughout the country. The other squalor and degradation of those who barely live within these squatter areas, seemingly with no choice in sight, daily barely survive. And those who dare to survive, some must face the daily tragedies of drug dealers, forced prostitution, being robbed or raped, even if those horrific conditions are not so prevalent in some areas, the daily grind of poverty, living in rat and cockroach infested areas, and also because of stagnant waters surrounding the properties, come unmerciful mosquito bites throughout the night. To say nothing about the stifling smell and open sewers running throughout the areas, living within these chaotic conditions, asthmatic sicknesses along with colds, viruses, and other infection attack adults and children alike. Even when the rains come, they should clean the air and wash away the raw sewage and decaying the dead bodies from the graveyard problem where some of the squatters live on top of, a slush of green slime comes out from the corpses buried on top of one another, providing more deadly peril to live within. And yes, we can continue this discussion regarding worldwide poverty sorrows throughout the global community, such as in Calcutta, India, or in Nigeria, Africa, and the war-torn Middle East. A daily track of people are fleeing their homelands because of war or running, desperately seeking a better life. The tragic consequences are the same. The sad reality is the worst of human nature takes place. Desperate measures are used by those who are in desperate situations. This is an example of those fleeing or floating on death trap rafts. Yes, this is one desperate way. Desperately seeking to feed your family by joining a radical terrorist group is another. Now, quoting wise words from the Eternal. Verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, King James Version. Lacking hope and opportunities to back up that hope breeds misery and despair. Yet, the same desperate, tragic decisions take place on, within the so-called first world, like America. Even in California, where I currently reside, Homelessness is a very serious problem throughout the state, and yet tragic events take place daily where I was born and raised in Chicago. Now given a new name called Chirac because of the rapid senseless killings. Now the president wrote back in January 2017, if Chicago doesn't fix the horrific carnage going on, 228 shootings in 2017, with 42 killings, which was up 24% from 2016, I will send in the feds. Now, this was tweeted out by the president January 25th, 2017. The month hadn't ended yet, and there was already 42 killings. Now, the reporter that put this out stated, 
Chicago's murder rate is high, and it has risen significantly in the last two years. But the recent rate of killings is not unprecedented. My oh my, how sad. During the mid-1990s, Chicago experienced a higher toll of murders than it did in 2016. Now, this was written by Rob Arthur. And yet, I'm, I'm not complaining about what he wrote. I'm just saying it's almost like they're thinking about it as this is okay. This is a better thing when it's an abomination. And those who criticize the president of the United States, as they do here where I am right now in the Philippines, the Duterte, the president here, trying to protect the country and its people from those who peddle drugs and put poison within their bodies. And yet all we do is criticize these leaders for doing what they can to get rid of the problem. And we, especially those who complain, do absolutely nothing. And yes, you can argue people in America become homeless for different reasons, yet the tragic effects are the same. Whatever the reasons, their lives spiral out of control. These lead to more tragic, desperate acts. Becoming addicted to a plethora of medications or narcotic drugs, in many cases, these actions leads to homelessness. And even perhaps that homeless state in, is, well, perhaps the least of their troubles. The solution is a new way of thinking. And a great way to enhance this new way is to change their environment, providing a clean, secure place to live. A place to live, learn, work, grow, in a place of peace. The global community must give those suffering with many sorrows relief. Relief must come in the form of opportunity, and these opportunities will breed hope. Introducing the new renewable energy communities, CEREB centers. These facilities will help bring a new beginning, a new start, a new life. If many of those throughout Chicago were given a decent place to live, with a decent job providing for their families, there would be little time and thought of killing thy neighbor. If the thousands of homeless living in California live in a better environment away from the drug infested streets, they would have a chance to clear their minds and strive to dream bigger and live cleaner lives. The same with those who live within the Middle East. With these renewable energy communities, when they are established, especially throughout the promised safe zones, they will be given new hope with new opportunities to live, learn, work, grow, and provide for their families. There would be little incentive for them to join any radical terrorist group. And those poverty-stricken citizens barely living, barely surviving, in many places throughout Africa, as well as throughout the nation of India and in the Philippines, can also acquire a new way of thinking giving the opportunity, living with hope in their new environment, learning, working and growing, having gainful employment, building these renewable energy facilities themselves, then their lives will be changed for the better forever. Now gaining this new way of thinking, they become educators of this way of life, giving uh, the opportunity to others. Now, instead of their present darkness of life, literally living on bodies of the dead, they now live with a new energy for life. Not as HR, homeless refugees, but as what we all are created to be. A great HR human 
resource. I'm looking very much forward to working with the entire global community to provide these new renewable energy ceramics.